Hi everybody. Well, I'm going to teach you how to make my famous, well, Smith family famous, elk habanero meatloaf. Um, it's a pretty, pretty simple recipe, but it is a crowd pleaser. So uh, depending on how many people you have in your family, we have three. So I use a pound of ground elk. We process all our own meat. Um, so when my guys make a harvest, we do a whole day of, of prepping and we grind our own meat. And we'll do, uh, we'll do some more videos on that you know, later on. But so for this recipe, I just use a, a pound of ground elk. Um, and then I'll also, I'll post the recipe at the end of this so you can write it on down, but, it, but it's really simple. So with this, if I was doing more, if I was doing like two pounds, you know, if I had a bigger family or something, I would use two eggs. But with, because it's just a pound, I only need one egg. So I always start, you know, I just make a, like a little bowl in the middle of it. And I put everything in. So I got my one egg. I'll kind of mix that so it gets all through all the meat. So it kind of coats all of it before I put everything else in. I, I like to mix as I go with every different ingredient so it's evenly evenly on all the meat. Nothing worse than taking a bite and getting a whole bite of fennel or, or whatnot. So I like it to all be kind of fluid through there. I use kosher, the coarse ground cor kosher salt. I don't know if you can see this. I love it. It's it's big. I uh, marinate it with using this. I cook with this. I, I just absolutely love it. I have table salt on the table for, you know, normal spicing, but when I'm cooking, I use this. So my recipe, it calls for like um, one teaspoon. Um, so you can, you can do that. It's salt to taste. Um, for me, I just, I'll just do a pinch. I kind of eyeball it now, but it calls for, you know, one teaspoon. So put a little of that in there. Some cracked pepper. Um, a couple turns of cracked pepper. I think my recipe is, again, one teaspoon, but you can adjust it to, after you've made this a, a little bit, you can kind of adjust it on your own, what you like. I wrote this recipe down, so down the road, I only have a son, so down the road, his wife, because my, my son does not cook, I'm trying to teach him, but he doesn't, but maybe his wife or significant other will uh, be able to cook for him. Um, okay, so then fennel is one of my favorite ingredients. I use this in a lot. So it calls for one tablespoon. Um, that would be for two pounds of ground meat. So again, you know, um, that, that's a lot. But so I'll, you know, I'll put it in here, maybe half a tablespoon for a pound of meat. So just sprinkle it in again, mix it all up. Some cumin. I just sprinkle, you know, kind of eyeball it. Cumin, it's calling for like half of a teaspoon of it. I just kind of put it in there. I love cumin. It's kind of an underrated herb. I love it. Gives it a nice, rich flavor, I think. All right, so that looks all, I don't know if you can see that the way we have a camera. This is my first cooking video. So I'll learn as I go. Um, I use... Uh, Breadcrumbs. I know a lot of people will do like bread or, or crackers or whatnot. I, I like more of um, a leaner, dense meatloaf, so I like breadcrumbs. So um, my recipe that I wrote down, it calls for about a half a cup to a cup of breadcrumbs. Again, you're looking at one to two pounds. So uh, everything I wrote down here is primarily for like a two pound meatloaf. So because we're doing a pound, you know, you'll, you'll bring that down to like a half a cup. This is a... A quarter. This is yeah. So this is like a third. So I can even use a third, and I can adjust that as I go too. But your uh, your breadcrumbs are really important. That most important ingredients coming up. One that a lot of people don't consider when they're cooking um, wild game. A lot of people are afraid of cooking wild game. You'll hear, oh, it's an old bull. It's an old buck, rank, rank old bull, rank old. This is an old bull. Um, a couple years ago, old old bull, and uh, the way I cook it, you won't have any game. You, you, you just won't, and there's a there's a trick to that. And I'll talk to, talk to you about that. I use it with all my wild game, my marinades, everything. So uh, I like dried mustard, so I'll put a, a good amount in there depending on my mood. 
little less, a little more. And then I like tomato paste. Oops. I like tomato paste. It has a lot, it has less sugar than ketchup. You can use ketchup though, if you like the ketchup. So, and, and this is a little bit thicker, so you'll have to add, you know, um, a little bit more of the oil coming up. So I'll mix the tomato paste in with that, that uh, ketchup. And you see how dry this meat is. It's already started off lean. When we butcher our meat, we don't add a lot of excess fat because it gives me far more versatility when I'm cooking, depending on what I'm making. I can adjust the fat before I even put it in, you know, in the skillet or into the oven. I have a little bit more versatility. So we like it really lean. Elk is one of the most leanest meat on the planet. So why mess with it? Why, why start off fat when you can add to, fat to it? All right, so now, um, the absolute trick to all wild game, no matter if it's a steak, if it's ground meat like that, is cooking oil. Simple, basic cooking oil. A lot of people say, oh, my granddad soaked it in buttermilk or milk to get the gaminess out. That's disgusting. I would never do that. Um, but cooking oil, you're working with super lean meat, and the, the, the leanness requires a fat content in order to get rid of a lot of the gaminess or a lot of the flavor that a lot of people consider gaminess. So... Cooking oil is your friend. When I marinate, it could be the best cut, back strap, you name it. When I'm marinating overnight, it's cooking oil, salt, and pepper. That's it. I don't do a lot of these rubs. I don't do a lot of all this over-seasoning, in my opinion. I keep it very simple so that those flavors can really um, come through. So for this, because of the breadcrumbs, all the seasonings and the spice, even the tomato paste is thick, right? So I have a very, very dense. If I were to cook this like now, when it would come out of the oven, it would be dry, it would be crumbly, it wouldn't hold together. Um, so I have here, what do I have here? Let me see what I poured in here. I have a half a cup of cooking oil. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just pour a little bit, and then I'm gonna mix, see what I got. You know, everything you should, you know, watch it as you do it. Don't, don't just pour everything in at once you want to you want to look at it and see if it's the consistency that you like and all this will cook out as well you have to have you have to have some some fat in there right so you and you can use any kind of cooking oil you like don't use olive oil it it messes with the flavor it gives it a an odd taste in my opinion but canola oil vegetable oil whatever you fry an egg with unless it's olive oil um, or butter. Don't use lard or Crisco or anything like that. That's gonna really mess you up. It's just regular cooking oil. So you pour that in, you can kind of see it's kind of glistening, it's not running out. There's not pools of it in the pan that I'm cooking in. And you see I'm mixing this in the pan in which I'm gonna be cooking it in. So there's just a nice sheen around the pan. Um, the meat looks, it's glistening. You can tell that there's some added oil to that. That's what you wanna see, you wanna see that. And then you just kind of form it sometimes like my my meatloaf never looks like a loaf it's always a circle you'll see that and usually i cook this in a little bit smaller pyrex this dish but i wanted you to kind of be able to see a little bit so i'll just kind of form it smush it down with my with my spoon get it all together like a big old patty it should be called meat meat patty I don't know. <laughs> so i make it into this patty and you'll see some of the oil along the edges you want to see that and it just changes it, I promise you. You try this and it will just change it. All right, let me put this over here. So I didn't even use a full half cup. I used about a quarter cup for, for that. So probably half a cup again, my recipe, um, hand done. This is, you know, something that, that, I, that I have done over years of putting things together. Oops, I'm gonna need that. I don't know why I shut that. And then with the habanero, here um, I freeze my habaneros and they cut really good this one's unthawed because I was prepping for for this but I freeze them I get them in season and I grow them we use a lot of them and salsas and you name it but I freeze them and when they're frozen they slice perfectly into these nice little spicy I don't know if you can see it but so I just slice it real thin now, a lot of people would put it in the meat. I do not do that because then it permeates the entire dish and you almost get too, too spicy. And if you like that, go for it. But 
my trick and then I'll take some more tomato paste or um, ketchup if you like ketchup you know the sugary but I like tomato paste it's just a little a little thicker this one's almost out I'll have to open a new one here pretty soon so I'll take that pull a little bit over the top kind of ketchup you know it does a lot better with that but the tomato paste is just thicker kind of smear it over the top and then I take the habaneros and I just put them on the top of it and another thing I like about doing it on the top is people can take it off they don't want to get a surprise by the habanero but as this cooks it will give you just enough flavor smoky habanero and kind of roasts them a little bit too but you don't get that overwhelming but I would I, you know, for me I don't put them in you know mixed in the whole thing so. and that's pretty much it it is super simple um, with the habanero and the way I've done this um, I get rave reviews on this particular recipe and everybody gets excited when I make it. It's not your traditional um, recipe, but give it a try and then uh, come back. If you, if you try this, I would love to see you come back to the, to the channel there and get, leave some comments on what you liked, even what you didn't like or what you, you know, what you appreciated about it. But if you liked it, I'd like to hear that you liked it because what cook doesn't like to hear that somebody likes their food, right? We kind of like that. But anyways, this is habanero elk meatloaf and um, we'll be posting the recipe the picture picture of the recipe um, my handwritten recipe at the end of the video on there for about 30 seconds so you can write it down and uh, if, you, if you need it again or whatnot just uh, comment and uh, I'll, I'll be sure to answer any questions about it and stay tuned for next Sunday not quite sure what I'm gonna make yet but it's gonna be something cool and uh, from the forest so that's pretty much all we eat is what guys harvest and what we what we harvest what we, what we catch what you know so anyways have a great sunday guys and enjoy your elk meatloaf